Okay, so I am going to try something a little bit different. Um, I was talking with my good friend Mike Colston, who I gave some zebra pens to. And um, I've been asked before to do some inking in a video, and I've never done it, uh, possibly because people will realize I do not really, I'm not like this great inker. So you're going to see my secret that I actually kind of go over stuff but I thought it might be interesting to give this a shot this is a sketch cover this is what I'm working on right now and um, I did a little bit of the this character this is Pupkin from uh, creator Niall Essels hopefully I'm saying his last name right he was in my making comics group but um, I'm gonna try to take a stab at inking this a little bit and Hopefully we can actually see what I'm doing. So with the zebra pen, you can get a nice variety of line weight. And I like to make my stuff thick at the bottom. You don't go very fast. It's kind of like more of like a, a slow type thing and you put it decent amount of pressure onto the brush. I joke that I'm a bit heavy handed when I do my inking. There's a little spot right there that's catching in the paper. And that makes this brush pretty good for me. But you can go real easy to a a thick to thin line like I can if I would go over this really light like I can get like just like you know standard line that you would get from like a felt tip pen but now if I press and I'm holding my my brush pen on about a 45 degree angle instead of I'm not doing it straight up and down I'm not doing it you know almost flat to the page I do it at about a 45 degree angle so then that way the tip will will press and I'll get I'll be able to get that much of a of a of a line weight into my art and if I want a thinner line I will tip tip it up a little bit I'm not I'm not like completely straight up but I'll, I'll go a little bit more vertical than I would otherwise and as you go, you can kind of like maneuver the, the zebra into your hand. And I'm shaking a little bit because I'm nervous that I'm recording a video. And you can kind of go through. See, I'm, I'm not this great inker, so I go over my stuff, I don't care. And I kind of look at what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And if I if I look at the after I ink something, if I'm if it doesn't appear to me that it's working, I'll go over it again. I, I don't care. I'd rather the image look good at the end than than have this like perfect line the first time. And I don't always follow the rule where it says draw a line straight through. <laughs> Do what I want. And I'll just kind of figure it in there. And this is behind them, so I'm going to spot that black. And the funny thing about inking is when you black out one area, it changes the look of the areas next to it. So I'm going to fill that in a little bit more. Got really shaky. And... It's always good to, sometimes you can ink away from you, and sometimes you can ink towards you. Uh, everybody is better at one way of inking or another. Um, I'm definitely more of an ink away from me type of person. So I will position my page to take advantage of my preferred way of inking. And this is really weird because I'm also holding a phone in my hand and I don't normally do that.
I'll go a little bit lighter, vary the line weights. I realize I'm, I'm not even inking where I'm aiming the camera. Because I'm literally holding this in my hand. But I just wanted to to get like a, a little bit of a behind the scenes shot of how I do this. Go light, light to middle, light, thicker because it's an outline. This is like some exploding light coming out of this bag of holding. I don't know if in his Niles comic if this is actually a bag of holding, but you know what? In my piece of art it is. I don't care. It's the nice thing about art. You can kind of do what you want. So fill that in. Go a little bit thicker at the end. I'll go thick to thin. And I'm not aiming at my guy again. So I'll go thin to thick. See, now I'm pulling it towards me. This is not my preferred style of inking, but sometimes, depending on the line, that will come out better than if you go your preferred way. So I'll go away. This one I'll try it on the line back up. Now these ones I'm going to go a little bit thinner because this is, I'm going to be spotting that in. So there's no real need to uh, spot that black in or uh, do a thick line. And the funny thing is, I've always noticed, is whenever you fill in something entirely in black, those will always be your best looking lines like if you uh, if I would have done that with with a line weight it would have just came out amazing for whatever reason and then I would have had to fill it in and you would have never seen it I, I guess that might just be me I could just be very unlucky I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker here because I like thick lines Trying to aim this where you can see it. I'll keep this a little bit thinner to help keep the variety between the hand and the bag. And now since this hand is behind the other one, I'm gonna go a little bit thinner than the line in front of it. So I'm, I'm looking at the line weights. If, if I finish this up and I feel like I didn't push it enough, I will go back and I will go over different parts of it again. I don't care. Do what needs to be done. I'm adding a little bit of line weight there. So this is Ghost. This is Pupkin and Ghosts. I'm pretty sure the uh, the story for this, it's been a while, but um, these are two trick-or-treaters. I'm not sure if they're kids in costume or if they're actually a, a, like an actual ghost and an actual dog with a jack-o'-lantern on his head. But they travel around and they have to collect the best pieces of candy. So if you want to see up in my sky up here, I have this epic piece of candy that's like through through the, uh, the backdrop of the post-apocalyptic Sunmaker world. So I thought it'd be funny to have a little caption like, we're not gonna, I don't wanna get this piece of candy, I don't care. So I thought it'd be fun, like a little throwback to like what, what Niall was working on when he was in my making comics group. Uh, a lot of the making comics people still all chat with each other. That's how I met my friend John Eddingfield II. Let's do that. That's how I met my friend Axton Collar. So it's, it's a really cool group. Um, you know, a lot of people were just starting out and a lot of those people are still doing cool things. Let's 
good stuff. So I, I like these thick lines. Sometimes I draw them in with my pencil. And I'll just... They say you lose a lot of line work, or a lot of... If you don't ink with like a single brush stroke, or you, you do very tight pencil work, that you lose a lot of the energy. And I think that might, that might be true, but I, I also feel like everybody's a little bit different. I just go until I, I find it appealing. Now, I'm, there was a tangent right there where, where that line was going into that, so I'm trying to move that over. I'll adjust my line art as I need to go because once you do it with the inks, that's it. All right, so there's a little bit of a shadow here. So I'm gonna go thick, thin, Super thick. And remember, I'm I'm tipping the zebra is on about a 45 degree. And one of the things that I really like about the zebra pen compared to some of the other ones, you know what? I'm actually going to fill this in. I think it will look better like that. Is um, uh, I really like the color black. The black is is very, very true black to me anyway. So that's one of the things that I, I enjoy about the zebra. Um, like if I have a, uh, oh my god, now I can't remember the name of it. The Pilot Pocket Brush. A lot of people use that. I use that to spot my blacks. And um, the one thing I don't like about that is the color of the ink. You can still see the brush strokes after you do it, and it drives me nuts. And I probably have a little bit of art OCD, I'm sure we all do. And so whenever I do something like that, I have to go over it twice. Which is kind of ironic because you know, I'm still going over different spots here twice. But when you're filling in a large area more than one time, um, I always mess up the second time I go through because I guess that's how I roll anyway I don't want to make this video super long so as soon as I finish up this little ghost guy here so I'll try to I'll try to get these eyes done in one thing my reference up there and aiming this guy So really thin, and I'm not sure if his eyes are filled in, but I'll do that with the Copic marker later. One thing that I learned from a John K. blog is uh, trying to make the eyes different sizes. John K. is the dude that did Red and Stimpy. And the whole expression comes from this one little line right there, that's it. Um, but yeah, so that, that's pretty cool for there. I think we're good. Um, you know, if, if you like this, you could always try to figure out how to hook up a better system. I don't know. But uh, if you guys enjoyed watching me ink a little bit, have a good one.